Welcome to Counters. In this lesson, we're going to be posting to ledgers. So we're going to be taking the amounts that we find in the journals and post them to their specific ledgers. After recording the totals in all different journals, it is then copied into the general ledger accounts. And these are the T accounts. So we're going to go through various general ledger accounts and show you how it's recorded there and how it's also closed off or how it's balanced off. So let's get into the example. Here's the example. We are given information here and the required says that we need to open the five general ledger accounts listed below with the given balances. We've got trading stock, we've got sales, we've got cost of sales, equipment and insurance. So we need to open the general ledger accounts listed below. So there are five. The second thing that we need to do is to post the totals of the journals to these five ledger accounts. And the third thing that we need to do is to balance these five accounts on the 30th of June 2015. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to address these three requirements and we're going to go through each one. So for trading stock, for instance, we're going to do all three requirements and then we move on to the next one, sales, cost of sales, equipment, and then insurance. So here we are told that Miss. Collier, the owner of TB Traders, provided the following information about the general ledger accounts of the business. We are given the balances at 1st of June 2015 and we are given for trading, stock, sales, cost of sales, equipment and insurance. And obviously it's for all those five that we need to create the T accounts or the general ledger accounts. We're given the totals from the journals of the business for the month of June 2015. Dates are very important here. Remember here, balances on the 1st of June or at 1st June 2015 is the beginning of the month. And this one here is what happened during the month of June, as we are asked here to balance these accounts on 30 June 2015. So we have the totals from all the journals all the way until the end. So let's begin with trading stock. How do we do our T account or our general ledger account? If you'd like more lessons on the general ledger accounts, you'll find one in the link in the description below where we explained it step by step. What is the general ledger? How is it done? What do you do when you're opening the balance? How do you balance it off or close it off? You'll find that one in the link in the description below, but you'll also get to understand it as we go through this one. So let's do the first one, trading stock. So let's open the T account for trading stock. Here we are. Remember, debit goes on the left, credit goes on the right. And that's gonna be the case for all general ledger accounts you'll always do, right? You put your debit on the left and credit on the right. Now, we know that trading stock is an asset assets increase on the debit side and decrease on the credit side that's very important to note and to remember if you'd like a tip on how to remember your debits and credits we've done another lesson specifically on that one it's a very short lesson where we give you an acronym where you are able to remember it you'll find it in the link in the description below as well so let's go back to our question and try and allocate what affects our trading stock the first thing that we can see here is the balances at 1st of June 2015 and you can see that's the first requirement open the five general ledger accounts listed below with the given balances so we have to put down the balance at the beginning of the month that's the easier one to do so we've got trading stock here and it's 75,000 rand so that's the opening balance so we're going to go back to our T account and we put the date here 1st of June 2015 that's the beginning of the month and we put balance brought down and we put in the amount 75,000 rand. I hope it's making sense. Trading stock is an asset. We record it on the debit side. That is why we're putting the balance brought down on the debit side. If it's the opening balance or it's the balance at the beginning of the month, the 1st of June, you always put it as balance brought down. That is the detail that you put there. And you put the amount, obviously, to 75,000 rand. Now that we've put our opening balance, let's go back and go through the journals and see what affects our trading stock. So here we have cash receipts journal and cash receipts journal. That is where we record all cash that has actually been received. We've also done a lesson on all these journals that we'll be looking at. You'll find them in the links in the description below. So cash receipts journal is for cash that we have actually received. What do we receive cash for? Well, it's for various things. One of which is when we sell inventory 
on cash and also receiving money obviously from those who owed you but we are focusing here on inventory we sold on cash you can see here sales is 37,500 rand but cost of sales here is 15,750 rand that's very important because it affects your trading stock remember whenever you sell trading stock you're recording your sales you're also recording your cost of sales how much it costed you to buy that stock or that trading stock that you are actually selling and remember trading stock and inventory is the same thing by the way so i may use those words interchangeably trading stock inventory or even merchandise so we've got cost of sales here 15,750 when you see cost of sales you know that that is the amount for trading stock so we're going to put it down and remember if it's cash receipts journal we are receiving money because we sold inventory that means this cost of sales amount of 15,750 is the one for trading stock that we sold i hope it's making sense when you see your cash receipts journal, when you see cost of sales day, it means you sold inventory. That means it's reducing the trading stock that you have in the business. So that means we take it to our credit side of the T account. So we go back here. We write 30 June 2015 because that's the end of the month. And we write down the cost of sales. And obviously, which journal does it come from? It comes from the cash receipts journal. And we put the 15750 Why on the credit side? Well, because our assets decrease on the credit side and trading stock is an asset, it's decreasing on the credit side. That is why we're putting it there, 15750 because we sold the inventory. That means our inventory has decreased by 15750 or our trading stock has decreased by that amount. So let's go back. We've just looked at the cash receipts journal. We've only got that amount for the cost of sales. And then if you go down, we can see here cash payments journal. The very first one there is trading stock, 16,800 rand. Cash payments journal is for cash that we actually paid out. That means if we paid out money, that means we're buying this trading stock. So inventory or trading stock is coming in to our business. So we're going to put it on the debit side of the trading stock account. So we're going to take this amount of 16,800 Rand and put it on the debit side. So let's do that. We put 30 June, the end of the month. Remember, we're only putting 1st of June or the beginning of the month, the day, only when we are opening the account. But the rest we're putting 30 June. And then we call it bank. And remember also with the T accounts or the general ledger accounts, if you checked out our other lesson that I mentioned on the general ledger accounts, you cannot put a description or a detail with the same name as the account. What do I mean by this? I can't put trading stock here because the name of the account is called trading stock. You will never have the detail of a transaction the same one as the name of the general ledger account. That's why here we are calling it bank. Why are we calling it bank? Well, because we paid out cash, cash payments journal to buy the inventory. And we got that from the cash payments journal. That is our folio, CPJ. And you put the 16,800 rand. I hope it's making sense so far. So let's go back. We've just looked at the cash payments journal. We've looked at the trading stock. We have no other trading stock in the cash payments journal. So we go down here. We can see what we have here. Data's journal. Data's journal is what we record whenever we've sold to our customers on credit. Very important. And here we have sales and we have the cost of sales. So whenever you see cost of sales, like I mentioned before, Trading stock is always affected. So we've got cost of sales here, 21,000. What does this mean? And why is it under the debtors journal? Well, it means we sold to our customers trading stock on credit. That means they didn't pay us cash. We sold to them on credit. So we're going to take this 21,000. And if we sold to them on credit, obviously it's reducing our trading stock. So it's going to go to the credit side of the trading stock account because it's reducing our trading stock, like I just said. So we take 21,000 rand. And we put it there. So we go to our trading stock general ledger account. We put it as cost of sales. And obviously this time the folio is DJ or the debtors journal. That's where it's coming from. And we put 21,000 rand there. So you can see here, whenever you've sold inventory to your customers, the detail there is going to be cost of sales. Right? Let's go back. We've just completed the debtors journal one. Now we've got the debtors allowance journal. And you can see here we have debtors allowance and cost of sales. What is our debtors allowance journal? Well, debtors allowance journal is whenever we have sold inventory to our customers or trading stock to our customers on credit and then they return those goods for some reason. Either they were the wrong types of goods we sent to the customer or they were damaged or there was something wrong with it. Whatever reason it is, they return the goods back to us. 
so you can see here cost of sales 900 rand that means we have trading stock coming back into our business that means it's increasing our trading stock again we put it on the debit side remember whenever it's increasing our assets we put it on the debit side so we go back there and we put cost of sales and the journal there is the debtors allowance journal 900 rand why is it cost of sales well because we had initially recorded it as cost of sales when we we're selling it but now they are returning it so we are sort of reversing it and that's why we are putting it on the debit side because we are receiving back trading stock worth 900 rand so let's go back we've just completed that one on the debtors allowance journal the next one that we have here is the creditors journal and you can see their trading stock 48700 and 50 rand what is the creditors journal well that is when we have bought from our suppliers on credit so we have bought trading stock worth 48,750 rand from our suppliers on credit that means it's increasing our trading stock so we record it on the debit side so let's go back we put the creditors control because whenever we've bought inventory or trading stock on credit we record it as creditors control and obviously it's coming from the creditors journal and the amount is 48,750. I hope it's making sense with the debits and credits. Whenever inventory is coming into the business, we record it on the debit side. Whenever it's going out, we record it on the credit side. So let's go back. And that's the only one under the creditors journal. But when we see the creditors allowance journal, we've got trading stock of 6,000 Rand. Well, I hope it's getting easier now. Creditors allowance journal is when we have returned goods back to the supplier and remember the creditors allowance journal we record whatever we've bought on credit and we returned back to the supplier so if it's under the creditors allowance journal obviously means we returned the trading stock back to the supplier that means it's reducing the trading stock that we have in the business so we're going to put it on the credit side 6,000 rand that is the amount so let's go back there and you can see here we have creditors control Creditors Allowance Journal or CAJ, that is the folio, and the amount there is 6,000 Rand. That is how much the trading stock that we returned was worth. So let's go back there. And we've just completed the one under the Creditors Allowance Journal. And you can see here we have General Journal. We've got Debtors Control and Creditors Control, so it does not affect our trading stock account. And we've just taken everything into account that pertained to our trading stock. All we need to do is to balance the account off and that's the third requirement remember the second one was posting the totals of the journals which we just did right now now we have to balance the account so let's go back to our t account or the trading stock account what do we do now well we just have to balance it off how do we do that we look at the difference between the debit and the credit whichever one is bigger we put it as a total for both sides so for instance if we are looking at this one here we have to add all the ones on the debit side 75,000 plus 16,800 plus 900 plus 48,750 and compare it to the credit side obviously the debit side you can see it's bigger than the credit side so we're going to take the total for the debit side and put it on both sides so here's what we're going to do the total for the debit side is 141 450 rand so we put it on both sides okay the total for the bigger side goes on both sides and then you look at what is missing from the credit side to make it equal the debit side i hope that's made sense as well we take the 141 450 rand minus 15,750 minus 21,000 minus 6,000 to see how much is missing on the credit side to make it equal the 141 450 or to make it equal the debit side so that's what we put as what's called the balance carried down so we put down here what is called the balance carried down and it's 98,700 how did i get that well, like i mentioned you take the total for the debit side 141 450 and you minus all the ones on the credit side to see how much is missing on the credit side to make it equal the debit side now once you have the balance carried down if you add everything on the credit side it should equal everything on the debit side now if the balance carried down is on the credit side that means obviously the big amount is on the debit side or the balance of this general ledger account is on the debit side so we do that we put first july 2015 very important you put it as the first of the following month remember here we're dealing with june 2015 but then when you're balancing of the account when you have the balance brought down you will put the beginning of the following month so first of july 2015 balance brought down and you put there 98,700 rand. What does this mean? Well, it means currently in our trading stock account, the amount is 98,700. Oh, we currently have trading stock worth 98,700 rand. I hope it has made sense 
and it was clear enough you can also check out the other lesson on the general ledger accounts you want to gain more understanding on this one here All right now we have just done the trading stock account let's move on to the next one the next one we're told to do here is the sales account well for the sales general ledger account the first thing that we have there is the balance at 1st of june 2015 and you can see the sales amount there is 475,000 rand. what is sales well sales is an income account and income increases on the credit side so obviously you have to remember that so we're going to take this 475,000 rand as the balance brought down and we're going to put it on the credit side so let's do that here is our sales account and obviously the amount there is 475,000 rand we'll put it on the credit side 1st of June 2015 and you can see for our opening balances like I mentioned before we put balance brought down and we put the 475,000 rand that was simple enough. Let's go back and see what other information we're given regarding sales. You can see here the journals, the cash receipts journal specifically. We have sales of 37,500 rand. That means we sold on cash for 37,500 rand. So it increases our sales account and obviously sales as an income increases on the credit side. So we're going to put the 37,500 rand on the credit side. And obviously the description is going to be bank because it's cash receipts journal, meaning we sold on cash and it's going to be bank. So we'll put obviously the end of the month, like I said, you put the beginning of the month when you're putting your opening balance, but the rest to put as the end of the month, unless we're given a specific date during the month for which that transaction belongs. So we'll put 30 June, we'll put bank, and obviously it comes from the cash receipts journal or the CRJ, and the amount there is 37,500 rand. Again, that was easy enough. So we'll go back here and you can see that is the only one under the cash receipts journal if we go to the cash payments journal obviously this is when we are paying out money so you'd not have sales under the cash payments journal so there is nothing there and then the next one we have here is the debtors journal again the debtors journal is when we've sold to our customers on credit and this is what we did you can see the sales amount there of 36,000 rand obviously that means we sold for 36,000 rand on credit so we're going to put it on the credit side of the sales account because it's increasing our sales so we'll go back there and we we'll put data's control because this is for what we sold on credit and put the folio there as dj or the data's journal and the amount there is 36 000 rand so whenever you've made a sale you can see you put it on the credit side because it's increasing your sales so let's go back and you can see the debtors allowance journal is obviously when they are returning goods back to you so that's not sales it doesn't affect sales creditors journal is the next journal we're looking at here it should not have sales because creditors journal is when we have bought on credit and that's not sales creditors allowance journal is when we've returned the goods we bought on credit obviously there's no sales there and you can see we have done everything that we needed to do for sales specifically so that was quite easy for us to go through. So all we need to do is to go back here and to put the totals here. Now we're going to balance off this account, obviously, even though we have nothing on the debit side. What we're going to do is to first put the totals on both sides and to put the balance carried down on the debit side, 548,500 Rand. And what you will see is that we do exactly what we did for the previous example, but now we know that it's lying on the credit side or the bigger side is the credit side. So we're going to put 1st July 2015, balance brought down 548,500 Rand rent now here's what i must mention if all amounts are on one side and there's nothing on the other side like what we have here all the sales amount were on the credit side and there was nothing on the debit side you'll see that others just like to put the total and don't have to close it off because all the amounts are on one side some might balance it off and some may not balance it off so whenever all amounts are on one side some will just leave it at that and just put the total without balancing it off but we chose to balance the account and have the balance brought down here 548 500 rand i hope that has made sense let's go ahead and do the next one so we've just done trading stock we've done sales now we have to do the cost of sales account what is the cost of sales account well the cost of sales account is an expense account and obviously our expenses increase on the debit side so obviously we're going to 
put the increase in the cost of sales on the debit side and the decrease in cost of sales on the credit side because expenses increase on the debit side and decrease on the credit side so the first one that we're doing there is the balance at 1st june 2015 and you can see the cost of sales is 315,000 rand now that we have the cost of sales as the opening balance of 315,000 rand, we're going to put it on the debit side and obviously put the beginning of the month so let's go to our cost of sales account here we are we have the debit and we have the credit everything that increases our cost of sales goes on the debit side so the first amount there is the 300 and 15,000 rand so let's go back first June 2015 balance brought down 315,000 rand I hope it's getting easier as we go along so we can move a bit quicker once we've done that let's go back and do our journal so remember the first requirement is just to open the five general ledger accounts and we just did that whenever you've put your balance brought down at the beginning of the month that's opening it and then posting the totals of the journals is obviously taking everything in the journals that pertain to each of these general ledger accounts and recording it in their specific accounts and balancing these five accounts is when you're doing the balance at the end so that's why we are doing all three requirements for each one as we go along so cost of sales let's see cash receipts journal you can see we have cost of sales of 15,750 rand so we put that on the debit side because it's increasing our cost of sales so we put 30 june there and we call it trading stock why is it trading stock well because that is how much the trading stock was worth in our books or that is how much we bought the trading stock that we sold for Okay, 15,750 rand. And obviously, the folio is CRG or the cash receipts journal. So we go back there. Nothing else on the cash receipts journal pertaining to cost of sales. And then under the cash payments journal, we have nothing on the cost of sales. Obviously, cash payments journal is when we are paying out. We are not selling inventory. So there's no cost of sales there. But under the debtors journal, we've got the cost of sales of 21,000 rand. Obviously, because we sold. So remember, cost of sales is whenever you have made a sale. Or when someone is returning what you've sold to them, that is when you would have your cost of sales. So under the debtors journal, we have cost of sales of 21,000 rand. We sold to our customers on credit. Now we have to record the cost of sales of 21,000 rand. It's increasing our cost of sales. So we record it on the debit side. So let's go back here. And you can see we record it as trading stock as well. And we put the DJ as the debtors journal, 21,000 rand. So let's go back again. And you can see debtors allowance journal. We've got cost of sales of 900 rand. What does this mean? Well, we had sold to our customers on credit and a customer returned the goods to us and the goods were worth 900 rand in our book. So that is how much it costed us to buy those goods that we sold and it's now returned back to us. So since it's the debtors allowance journal, whenever they're returning to you, then we put it on the credit side because it's decreasing our expense account or it's decreasing our cost of sales account because it's no longer a cost of sale because they've returned it back to us so we go back and put it on the credit side 30th of june 2015 trading stock and obviously the folio is data's allowance journal and the amount there is 900 rand that means our cost of sales reduced by 900 rand because they returned the trading stock that we had sold on credit all right now that we have done that we go back here and you can see that we have done everything that pertained to cost of sales you can see credit as a journal creditors allowance journal obviously those ones will not have the cost of sales because it's dealing with our suppliers so there was no sale there and the general journal there is no cost of sale so that means that we have just completed that one so let's go back and balance the account we compare the two sides again and as you can see obviously the debit side is the bigger side so we're going to put the total of the debit side on both sides and the amount is 300 and 51,750 rand and we put it on both sides and then again what is missing on the credit side to make it equal the debit side well that is going to be our balance carried down so obviously we'll take the total of 351,750 rand and we deducted the 900 rand to get the balance carried down of 350,850 rand now that we have done that obviously we put down the balance brought down at the beginning of the following month so it's first july 2015 balance brought down 350,850 rand that means as at the end of the month or as at the beginning of the following month our cost of sales amount is 350,850 rand now that we have completed that one let's go back 
and do the next one we have equipment here now the equipment obviously we going to open the account equipment we have debit and we have the credit and you should know that equipment is an asset and assets increase on the debit side so whenever we have an increase in equipment we we'll put it on the debit side whenever we have a decrease in the equipment we we'll put it on the credit side so let's go back and put the balance at 1st of june 2015 equipment 15,000 rand. obviously it will go to the debit side because it's an asset so we put 1st june 2015 balance brought down 15,000 rand right that was quite easy so let's go back and start with our journal so you can see cash receipts journal that's when we're receiving cash so it would not be there and then the cash payments journal you can see we didn't pay cash for equipment as you can see we do not have equipment under that journal and then the debtors journal that's when we are selling inventory and credit it would not be there debtors allowance journal that's when they are returning goods to us it would not be there and then you can see here under the creditors journal you have equipment of 29,700 rand that means we bought equipment on credit so that means since we bought the equipment it's increasing our equipment that means it goes on the debit side so we go to our general ledger account for equipment 30 june creditors control and obviously that comes from the creditors journal we put the 29,700 rand because we're buying equipment on credit it's increasing the equipment we have in the business so let's go back and we've just completed the one in the creditors journal creditors allowance journal you can see equipment 150 rand that means we returned the equipment that we bought on credit back to our supplier for whatever reason so if we are returning equipment back to our supplier it's coming out of our premises are coming out of the business that means it goes on the credit side because equipment decrease on the credit side so we we'll go to the credit side we put 30 june 2015 creditors control creditors allowance journal 150 rand i hope that was easy enough so let's go back and as you can see that is the last thing we had for equipment so we're going to balance the account so let's go back here obviously we put the total of the bigger side on both sides and obviously the bigger side is the debit side so we're going to put the total of the debit side on both sides 44,700 rand once we've done that we look at the credit side and see what is missing in the credit side or how much do we need to make the credit side equal the debit side well we're going to take the 44,700 rand minus 150 and it's going to give us 44,550 rand that is the balance carried down and we bring that back here to the debit side because the debit side is the bigger side we write the first of the following month first july 2015 and we write balance brought down 44,550 rand that means as at the end of june 2015 or at the beginning of july 2015 we have equipment worth 44,550 rand in the business i hope that was easy to do as we go along let's go back and as you can see we've just done equipment the last thing we are doing here is insurance this is also going to be an easy one to do so we'll move a bit faster we are going to open our insurance t account or the general ledger account insurance is an expense increases on the debit side decreases on the credit side so let's go back you can see balance on the 1st of june 2015 for insurance is 3500 so we'll go to the debit side because insurance and expense so we we'll put the 1st of june 2015 balance brought down 3500 then we we'll go back and we we'll look at our journals cash receipts journal obviously we don't have insurance there but under cash payments journal you can see the very last one there is sundry accounts and we are told what that sundry account is on the fifth insurance was 1500 so we're actually given a date here so we're going to put that date 5 june 2015 and not 30 june and that's what i mentioned earlier on if you remember i said if you're given the date put that specific date if you're not given the date you can put the end of the month 30 june that's what we've been doing all along so only this one here we're given the date so 5th of june 1500 rand remember this is a cash payments journal that means we paid for insurance 1500 rand so we'll go back we'll put 5 june and we'll put bank there because obviously cash payments journal we paid cash comes from the bank account and the folio is cpj or the cash payments journal and we put 1500 rand that is what we paid and then we go back and we see if there's anything else that has been said about insurance and you can see there's nothing on insurance in any of our other journals so we just go back and we balance the account 
Again, you can see there's nothing on the credit side. So some would just balance it off by putting the total on the debit side. But we will balance it off the way we've been balancing off other accounts. So we'll put the total on both sides, 5,000 Rand, which is the 3,500 plus 1,500. And we we'll put 30 June 2015 on the credit side and we we'll put balance carried down 5,000 Rand. And we'll come back to the debit side because it's the bigger side. And we we'll put 1st July 2015 balance brought down 5,000 Rand. I hope it has made sense. I hope you now know how to deal with this. I hope you know how to do the general ledger accounts or how to take the amounts from the journals and put them in your ledger or general ledger accounts or T accounts and to balance the account. If you have gained value from this lesson, you've learned something, consider subscribing to our channel, like this video and share it to those who think it might help. Till next time. Cheers.